and let that heat continue to go through the meat. Welcome back to Teach Man to Fish channel. Today's video is going to be venison steak taken from the round on the hind quarter and we'll be cooking it on a large flat griddle directly on the stove. There's going to be a few tips and tricks and what makes this end up tasting fantastic. It's a simple recipe. We're going to do some sides, but we'll actually just be focused in on getting the steak in this video. Let's go ahead and get started. So out of all of these ingredients, most of them are for the sides. But what we're worried about for specifically for the venison is the salt, pepper, the venison, and some herb infused butter. So probably through this whole cook, the hardest part is gonna be the sides. We'll go ahead and speed through that and getting all of those ready. Now that we have the, the preliminaries done for the sides, let's go ahead and take this boned out ham. And again, this was from a dough, just a medium sized dough for, for Virginia here. And we're gonna go ahead and pull out the top round and the bottom round and use that in this cook. So we'll separate out those two muscles, clean it up, get rid of all this fat and the blue skin, and it'll be ready for the next step. I'm gonna go ahead and dry them out, pat them down. And again, that's a critical part of the process. You wanna make sure that you get that meat well patted down and dried because it enables to get the proper crisp or the proper grill marks on that meat. Dry meat gets better crispy lines on it when you're doing it on the grill. Throw some olive oil on that meat liberally, apply it across the whole thing. Venison has very little fat in it and that fat or oil is what also helps those grill marks to appear on the venison. Now, as far as the type of oil, that's for your choice and pick. Apply it liberally. I'm using some avocado oil. Olive oil will be just fine. There's not much of that oil or fat in deer meat and how much it helps conduct the heat into the meat and help with the browning, coat it liberally. So remember, hot cast iron, cold oil, warm meat. You'll notice the, the grate on this Lodge uh, grid iron, they call it. We'll use that to make presentation side of the meat, which will be the flatter side of this cut. We're going to be going after a cross hatch for just basically the visual appeal of this cook. This meat has been aged four or five days in the refrigerator in a, a, just a regular bag, it sat in there. Aging the meat is critical in both getting the right flavor and texture out of that deer meat. If you've ever eaten fresh deer meat harvested the day of, just about the only thing you can eat on the deer is the deer heart. First day of, of harvest, the rest of it, the texture only gets better after about four or five days. And on fresh meat, on a fresh harvest, even your back strap will come out stringy and pop. So this meat has been aged. It was taken on about four or five days ago. Normally I like to get a few more days than four days in. There you can see that browning starting to travel up the meat, as well as the meat readily lifts off. That means the sear marks have set in properly. Go ahead and do a 90 degree rotation. So we're already starting to hit 120 degrees on the one side. So let's go ahead and flip that over. and let that heat continue to go through the meat.
Again, critical point for my taste and my family's taste, we never want to go over 120 degrees in the center of the meat. Dinner's ready. So now that we have the sear marks across that meat, we're gonna go ahead and turn it down and get it to the temperature that we want. We're trying to stay below 120 degrees. All right, so since this piece is a little bit thinner on this side and thicker in the middle here, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that off and let it rest and let it finish cooking throughout. You cook deer meat over 120 degrees in the center, it ends up getting tougher and tougher and tougher the longer you cook it. You really hit the home run and the flavor comes from this, that restaurant style chef made steak is when you go ahead and melt that herb butter across the top of the steak. That adds so much more flavor to your cook and just gives it just the right touch that you were looking for. You'll notice we're cutting across the grain. Earlier, we whipped up a batch of herb, garlic, Parmesan butter. I hope this video is doing it justice. This, uh, the flavor in this meat is so incredibly good, nicely cooked, rare in the center, just the way venison should be. Mm. So YouTube says that this video is perfect for your viewing habits, and this video is a whole playlist of my other venison cooking. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please click like, subscribe, share, and come on back for more.